Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to take a look at the Magic of War and Healer build for the Somerset chapter. I do have a written guide on my website, I go into more detail there, so check it out if you want, link in the description. When we look at our stats, we have really nice stats. We're running Dachanark Mundustone. Buff food wise, you want to run the Witch Hunters Potent Brew. Potions, I use the Spell Power Pots. However, you don't necessarily need those. It's just nice to have 47 seconds uptime on the pots. We already have access to sorcery and prophecy. Because of this skill here, gives you sorcery. This one gives you prophecy. So you don't necessarily, you could run normal pots. Just as a reminder. Race. You can use a High Elf, Argonian or a Breton. If you want the optimal race, but... You can basically run it on, you can even run it on a Kashit if you want. As long as you have enough Magicka Recovery, it's all good. I prefer High Elf because they get more Magicka Recovery. And you get 10% Max Magicka. And you can always swap to a Damage Shield setup because you have those nice, this nice Elemental Talent passive. If you want, you can be a Vampire. I do not recommend it. It's just too much fire damage and then you die. Please don't forget to subscribe, more videos in the future. Now, once again, this is my go-to set for healers. Why? As you can see, there's really nice stats. Casting ground-based abilities in combat will create a circle of might on the ground for 10 seconds. You and your ally standing in the circle gain major courage for 30 seconds, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 258. How does it look like? This is a circle. Now we don't have the buff, we walk in, we get Major Courage for 30 seconds. And this is really nice because you can... The buff holds for so long. And when you are raiding or like in a trial, you have to reposition. It's so easy to just reapply it on the whole group. Because the buff holds for that long. That's why this is so nice. Healers used to use spell power cure, but this set is just hands down so much better. First off, it has a 12 player cap compared to spell power cure, which only has a 6 player cap. Spell power cure's duration of major courage is only 10 seconds. This here is 30 seconds. So yeah, that's basically, it's just... With this here, only one healer needs to wear it and you get the 90 to 100% uptime in the raid. Spell power cure is usually around 70 and 2 healers need to vary. In your raid group only one healer needs this, the other one can run for example Sanctuary and some other set. Now the second set that we use here is Mending. On my website I have several good healing sets listed. So there is Mending, Sanctuary, Yorwolds and a few others like Kagranak and that stuff. This is just one option. Now why Mending? When you use an AoE heal ability, you reduce the weapon damage of all enemies within 10 meters of you by 430 for 3 seconds. I do have an article about maximizing damage mitigation in trials where I explain this set in detail. It's on my website in the trial section. It says weapon damage. So a lot of people think it doesn't work on mages. But that's not true. PV mobs all scale of weapon damage whether it is a mage or a fight uh, a warrior it doesn't matter but when you look at this 430 is quite a lot that's like i mean the boss will deal like 15 percent less damage and trash packs will deal about like 25 to 30 percent less damage that's such a strong set however you have to be careful with one thing of all enemies within 10 meters. So it needs to be within a 10 meter radius. That's the only dangerous thing. You really need to make sure. Maybe you want a little bit more stamina if you need to block more. And so on. That's the thing. If you're too far away, it will not apply the debuff. Let's just keep that in mind. The last set is the is Sentinel of Gugamets set, or however you pronounce that. You can also use Earth Core or Night Flame, it's up to you. This is just another nice healing set, which also gives stamina to the group if you have stem setups and so on. 
We can now run two five piece sets and the monster set thanks to the changes to st to staves because they count as two bonus now. So we can run five piece here, then five piece here and two monster set. Make sure one heavy, one medium. So we benefit from the undaunted passive here. We get 6% more max resources. Infuse, try set and chance on the big pieces. And divine magic on the small. Here, reduce magic cost of spells, spell damage, spell damage. You need to decide if you feel comfortable with your magic recovery. We have quite a bit and we have the Netch that also gives us Magicka. If you feel you don't need that much, you could replace this with another spell damage glyph. Weapon, restoration stuff, front bar with a power enchant and absorb ma uh, power trade and uh, absorb magic enchantment. This is just here to help us a little bit more sustain. Back bar, lightning stuff, charge, trade, shock and chant. This is here to apply the shock and chant status effect, concussion. Once concussion is on the target, the target will take 8% more damage. And with a charged trait, you have like a 80 to 90% chance to apply the status effect. So it's really easy to keep it up. That's it about the gear setup champion points. 23, 9, 18, 15, 37, 75, 73. Those here are the most important ones. 75 here for increased healing and 73 for more crit heals. That's the thing. So if you're not max CP, start filling those first. I do have a 300 CP list on my on the build page. If you're not max CP. 46, 10, 75, 75. Those three are the most important. Tenacity, heavy attack restore, 14% on top of the restoration cycle of life, which gives you another 30%. So you restore a lot of resources if you really want to. Like when we look at this, it goes up by so much. It's really nice. Obviously, this is here to get more magic recovery. 44 Warlord. 49, 49, 48, 81, 23. This is a pretty standard setup. If you want a more trial specific red CP setup article on my website to maximize the damage mitigation. Passives, all class passives. Then you want destruction stuff, restoration stuff, light armor, heavy juggernaut. You only need this here to get more max health. Fighter skilled. Banish the Wicked. Major skill, you don't necessarily need it. Switching order, also not mandatory. Then Undaunted Metal here, 6%. You want both of those, basically. Racial passives. And Alchemy Medicinal use. This is here, so we can keep up the potions 100%. The, all the passives you need, there's also a list on my website. Now, for abilities, like always, Healing Ward. Lower the player's health that you heal with it, or that you shield with it the bigger the shield gets so you can get up can get up to a 300% shield strength increase and it also heals the player when the shield expires combat prayer applies minor berserk on the players the group members increasing the damage done by 8% and it's also a nice burst heal and it has a quite long range 20 meters Healing Springs, your go-to heal, basically, you want to keep this up all the time. Just a really nice heal over time. And when you hit three targets, you're also going to get Magicka back. Like, up to three targets every time you hit one dude. So the cost is very low. Enchant and Growth. So, you see, any target heal gains minor intellect and minor endurance, increasing their magic and standing recovery by 10%. So this is nice increase the recovery without that we would be like a 2.6k and it's also a very strong burst heal and the range is pretty big 20 meters it's a very small cone though just keep that in mind blue betty 
This is a free cast, gives you 4k magic back over 27 seconds, applies major sorcery on you, and it removes one negative effect. So every time you use this, it removes a negative effect, which can be nice. Aggressive Warhorn gives 10% more max magical stamina and health. Major Force increasing your critical damage done by 15% uh, for 9 seconds. This is usually the ultimate you should use. However, if you want, you can also use the Enchanted Forest. So you generate 20 ultimate if the initial heal is used on a friendly target under 50% health. If the tank drops low or just somebody's really, really low, you can use this. And this is just so much healing. It has a really nice heal over time. 8 meter radius, 6 seconds duration. And it only costs 90 ulti points. That's a good, that's a nice thing about this. Budding seeds. So this is a another, I wouldn't say burst heal. So you basically, like you see... Summon a field of flowers which blooms for after 6 seconds, healing you and allies in the area for 10k health. So this is a very strong heal, you place this, and after 6 seconds it gives this huge burst heal. So let's call it a delayed burst heal. While the field grows, you can activate this ability again to cause it instantly bloom. So when we cast this, it will go up instantly. And now the nice thing about this is it provides a synergy. An ally within the field can activate the harvest synergy, healing for 10k health over 5 seconds. That's the cool thing about it. Blockade of storms again to apply the shock enchantment and to also proc the minor magicka steel. You increase sustain even further. Also applies major breach. Reduced bell resistance on the enemy. Lotus Blossom, this here gives you Major Prophecy and Embrace the Lotus Blessing causing your light attacks to restore 1.6k health and your fully, he your fully charged heavy attacks to restore 4.7k health to you or a nearby ally. Then we have Energy Orb, applies or like players can use a Synergy, the Healing Combustion heals for a lot and it gives them resources back, very important. That's the basic skill setup. If you want, you can swap out a few things. For example, like I only have the net here on the front bar. So we only benefit from the 12% recovery on the front bar. It doesn't necessarily matter that much. This is just a setup I run at the moment. Once again, feel free to adjust everything. This should be a base for your build so you can adjust things. Anyway, I think I talked a lot. If you have any questions about the build, ask me in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Cheers.